In reply to the Honourable Member's question, I can only say... Ah! Waiter, sir? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Ransom down the stairs is much safer. What about my blind? Your blind? Put it on my bill. Where is he? Gone. Gone who? No one, the gas man. Now wait a minute, the gas man. The gas man! Oh, 
Bill, I never expected you. I thought If that... you weren't expecting me, what do you doll yourself up for? The gas man? Bill! And if he's gone, why is the door locked? Oh! What's my picture doing like that? Oh, Bill, why are you always so jealous? I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> I'm sorry. Why don't I always blow my top? <laughs> Lord Mayley? It's his lordship expecting you. No one does, but I think you'll see me. Thank you. Right, sir. Now, quite still. Sorry. <clears throat> what a sight. Take a look. Hmm? Your position. Now, quite still. Thank you very much. Oh, there you are, Henry. Finished? Yes. How do I look? Oh, very chic. Chic? Thought the word was chic. Yes, darling, it is, but not when applied to you. Okay. Listen, there's a journalist to see you called Dennis. Rather a smarmy Shh, feature. Mighty, mighty over here, and you know how sensitive journalists are. <laughs> I'd better see him, isn't it? All right. Thank you, Lord Mayley. Oh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Dennis. Oh, good day to you, my lord. Good day to you. Come in. Thank you very much. I see you're going to a dance. Oh, it's absolutely magnificent. Oh, a joke. Oh, very funny. Very oh, funny. Uh, take a few. Oh, thank you. Well, I'll be as brief as possible. Uh, huh? No. Oh, sorry. Thank you very much. Uh, have a cigarette. Oh, thank you. Oh, we seem to run out. <laughs> well, not to worry. Scandals? What's this? Oh, it's one of those American scandal magazines. You know, the ghastly truth about people's private lives. Do borrow it if you wish. Oh, very charming of you. I shall thoroughly enjoy reading this. Rather naughty, I believe. <laughs> yes. Well, now, let's get to business. I, myself, am running a modest little magazine in England entitled The Naked Truth. Well, a vulgar title, isn't it? Uh, vulgar, perhaps, but uh, terribly apt. Here, on the inside, we have a short biography of your public life and works. Very oh, yeah, nice. Yes. Yes. While on the opposite page, we have The Rail Works. About me? Oh, yes, indeed. Well, if it's about me, why is it titled Guess Who? Because as British law stands, the public mustn't be able positively to identify you, Lord Mayley, with the naughty hero of this article here. Naughty? But I don't quite understand what's about me. Uh, have you a weak heart or high blood pressure? Yeah. Well, uh, read it then, just to check the facts. It's the naked truth, old lord. But, but no publisher would dare. Oh, yes, I would. I've been into the legal aspect most carefully. The fact that Mr. X was the center of an amorous incident in Regent's Park <laughs> has no connection with Lord Maley's magnificent gifts for charities. Of course, by judicious word of mouth, I suppose the public might be persuaded to connect the two. You'll go to jail. I'll sue you. Try it. You'd have to prove that Mr. X was you. And by doing that, you rather infer the story is true, don't you? Dare you risk that? This is England. There must be a way. There is. An immediate cash gift of £10,000 to the Distressed Journalists Association, of which I am the founder, the treasurer, and uh, so far the only member, would, I'm sure, persuade the editor, myself, to suppress this particular issue. Then it's blackmail. That's different. Well, of course it's different. Either way, I make money, you see, by a lump sum in cash or by raking in the royalties. Oh, it'll sell like hot cakes. Look how keen you were to read all about other people's little secrets, eh? Well, that's just... My card. Pay up in a fortnight or I publish in a month. You... Uh, don't bother kick me out. Oh, well, pardon me, my cigarettes. Ten thousand pounds for a quarter of an hour. Good 
evening. On behalf of we Sonny McGregor, I'd like to welcome you to the 167th edition of your top TV show. The show you all enjoy and love. Here's to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now, let me introduce you to the star of the show, the man who made it all possible, the jack of all faces, the king of kindness, and the ace of good hearts, we, Sonny McGregor! Here's to you. Here's to you, too. Welcome, Sonny. A great big welcome to all the old folk and the bonny young lads and lasses. I can't tell the difference, you know. <laughs> well, I know that you're going to make this show a real sizzling humdinger. Now, as you all must know, at this point in our program, we usually introduce the winner of our last week's talent contest. And here he is, Ex-Sergeant Rambo. <laughs> Here's to you, Walter Boy. And here's your prize. <laughs> no, 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 Walter. That's not your prize. Oh, how old did you say you were? Oh, no, no, that's your prize, Walter. That's it, man. <laughs> Hey, now be a good boy, Walter, be a good boy. <laughs> yes, Walter, that pigskin wallet is for you. Because, folks, every week we give one of these beautiful prizes away, absolutely free and for nothing. But, Walter, what use to you is a pigskin wallet if it's empty? It's no use to you, is it? <laughs> is it? No! Right, yeah. so you know what I'm going to do for you, Walter? I'm going to fill it. I'm going to fill it, Walter, out of my own pocket there. Look at that. Ten beautiful new crisp one-pound notes. All for you, Walter. <laughs> it's a good job I'm not married. The wife might have been doing that pocket this morning. <laughs> <laughs> now, Walter, did you bring it? Did you? Well, let's see it then. Where is it? Oh, he's brought it. He has his penny whistle. <laughs> And Walter, what are you going to give us? And a bit of Argus Land. A bit of Argus Land. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> all right, Walter boy. It's all yours. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, Largo's handle? What's he trying to do, pinch my laughs or something? The stupid old nit. I've just laid out ten pounds, put a shit into the accounts department for ten guineas. Chief accountant was in front tonight. Hmm, he would be. All right, we'll make you ten quid then. <laughs> oh, there's a um, journalist, um, Mr. Dennis, wants to see you, left his card. Not tonight, boy, I'm too tired. I don't want to know about journalists, thank you. Oh, he's a real right one, very tenacious, and he's in front. Is he? Well, good luck to him. Oh, what do you want to tell him, Richard? Oh, I think wonderful. you're so funny, mate. Straight on you, I think he's lovely. Please, could you put to Frida? Yes, I put to Frida. God bless you, sonny boy. God bless you, ma'am. <laughs> well, Mitch, I'll say one, two, three, four. Could you put to me? I'm awfully sorry, dear, no time. Mr. McGregor, my name's Dennis. I sent him my car. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I have no time to see you now. If I mention a certain property in East Stitch, do you think we'll have a quiet chat? Hmm? Yes. I rather care for the bit about the star who loves slumming. So true. Look, just because I own a little property... But, but what a property. 
I don't somehow think that the old folk living in those hovels love their landlord very much. And if they found out that it's we, Sonny McGregor. But I, I haven't got 10,000 pounds. <laughs> Spoken like a true Scot. But where's the bonny accent gone? Yes. Nice little house this is. My home's a leaky Thames barge. Can't wait to settle down myself. Listen, man. I'll not plead for myself. I just want you to cast a thought for those tens of thousands of old folk. Poor, friendless old folk. You see, they look up to me as their guide and comforter. Right. I'll cast a thought for them, and you'll cast around for the ten thousand. Hmm? Oh, by the way, don't bother to consult your lawyers. I've consulted three, and they all say that it's foolproof. Take your choice, sonny boy. Pay in a fortnight, or I publish in a month. Uh, don't bother to kick me out. Don't bite your nails. Ah, oh, shut up. Mind your manners. Well, you have got yourself into a proper pickle, haven't you, Mr. M? You've been listening at the door again. Well, I'm only trying to be helpful, you know. Go on, say it. Say it. I'm fired again, aren't you? Yes. It strikes me you can both start looking for another appointment. It's the end of we, Sonny McGregor, you know. Don't bite your nails. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, pray silence for that wizard of the perfect crime, D. Mandeville. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, contrary to a widespread rumor, I am a woman. <laughs> the fact that I write of detection, crime, and sudden death and prefer the title of D. Mandeville to that of my own name, of Desiree Minch, is probably responsible for this misconception. <laughs> we are gathered here for the presentation of the annual Purity Prize for Literature. Flora is read by the highest and lowest, the youngest and oldest in the land. Never has this coveted award been more deservedly won. <laughs> In addition to winning this prize, Flora herself has also been won and will shortly be embracing the church. Good old daddy Bashi. Flora, rise and get it. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not deserve this. All I can say is, this is the happiest, the happiest. <laughs> I confess I, I am greatly disturbed. So am I, Daddy Bessie. She has something on her mind. Mm. I haven't worked in a nursing home for all these years without knowing when someone is, well, on the brink. Quite, quite. Ethel! Hmm? Ethel! What are you whispering about out there? <laughs> Nothing, my dear. I was just saying that that window, well, it really ought to have a railing. I don't want any questions. It was an... An accident. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm sure you'd no more attempt fellow to see than you'd contemplate committing a... Um, Murder? Oh, precisely. <laughs> yes. I hope no one would suspect me of that. Oh. Ethel, is that old trunk still in the loft? I think so, Mumsy. Why, were you thinking of going away? No. But somebody else, maybe. <laughs> They could publish and get away with it, eh? Oh. A good idea? It's absolutely scandalous. You lawyers ought to be shot. No, of course I'm not being blackmailed. It's just that I'm being, um, it's... Oh.
Hello? Is that Nurse Hopkins? Lord Maley here. I was just ringing up to ask about my wife's father. It was yesterday, it was rather feared. Sitting up. Remarkable. Oh, then uh, he's probably fit enough to sign a, I, I mean to read and write. He is? Oh, good. Uh, well, give him my guards. Ah, who's that? My, uh, my stockbroker. Oh, Lucy, I've just had a tip for some shares. Do you think your father might lend me some money? I'm absolutely sure he wouldn't. Blast! When you clap a jack and joker on a Saturday night, you knock them down the old Kent Road. When you flap a jack and joker on a Saturday night, you knock them down the old Kent Road. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Wonderful. Now, uh, what part of Birmingham do you come from, Fred? Oh, I don't come from Birmingham. No, well, I come from London. <laughs> <He's a foreigner>. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, what part of London is it? Eastditch. Eastditch? Yes, Eastditch, and I never want to see it again. Right, then, fine. Maybe Eastditch we... is hell on earth, and you can have Eastditch and all that goes with it. Well, shut up about Eastditch. I just Eastage. tell you, I just don't like Eastditch. Shut up about 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 Eastditch. Shut up You really must do something about yourself. At this rate, you'll be finished without any assistance from Mr. Dennis, you know. What can I do? I really don't know. Push him under a bus. That's the only way to get rid of pests like that. That's just the sort of stupid remark you would make. Hmm. Me, who wouldn't have a fly. Who couldn't... I couldn't. But someone else might. Who? Anyone. Any one of a thousand characters that I can create and then destroy. Just like that. What are you going on about, Mr. M? Murder, Porter. Murder. Murder by a person or persons unknown. By someone who doesn't even exist. A will o' the wisp. Murder by a figment of my imagination. Oh, no. No, you mustn't. You'd never get away with it. I can smile and murder while I smile. Oh, dear. I'll drown more sailors than the mermaid shall. It's the old Vic trouble, isn't it, sir? I'll play the orator as well as Nestor. Deceive more slyly than Ulysses could. And like a sign-on, take another try. Now, would it be a good make-up to go snooping around that barge of his? Mr. M, the tell is one thing, but real life's quite another. Hmm? You'd only go and overdo it. Why should I? Because you always do. Tell me. Frankly, you always overact most dreadfully. I'll be sorry you said that, Potter. All right, go and fire me again. But for goodness sake, get this old mad idea out of your head. You are too late, my friend. The die is cast. <laughs> This is an unexpected pleasure. Uh, do come in. There it is wiser to telephone. Please sit down. Would you like a drink? I do hope this isn't an appeal to my better nature, Miss Wright. I haven't one. No. Oh, well? But you might as well know. My engagement's broken off. I'll never see Bill again. So it's no good you going on blackmailing me because I haven't a penny in the world. Hmm, this is shocking news. But 16 Texan oil wells shouldn't be lightly thrown away. Oh, that doesn't matter. You wouldn't understand. I really love him. Mm. And I'm nobody without him. So please, please leave me alone. I'm sorry. But it would still make a good supporting feature. 
Lurid Pass loses luckless model Texan oil millions. <gasps> oh. no, 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 look, my dear. You'll be much better off trying to win him back than wasting your time and mine. Ah. What's the... What's the... Oh, I'm, what's the, I'm sorry, sir. What are you doing here? Well, well I beg your pardon, sir, for barging in, if you'll excuse the word barge. Well, get out of here at once. Yeah, well, I'm trying to, sir. All right, I'll see that you do. Oh, uh, wait here a minute. Yes, I do. Well, sir, you see, I'm from the uh, London Bureau of Boats, Barges, Bricks, all tether bottoms, and maintenance of, sir. That's it. Yeah. Uh, maintenance? This place is condemned. I'm the last one here. And lucky you are, sir. I mean, if you've got wet rod right on the top, that means you've got dry rod right on the bottom. What the devil are you talking about? I, I'll show you what I'm talking yeah, Look at that. There. There. What? It, ah. what the, it, oh. Ah. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'll see what I can do about it, sir. I'll try and get them before they close, sir. I haven't got a call with me, so I'll, um, I'll be back late. Terrible thing, that, sir, you got there. Terrible thing, that happened. Terrible mess you got there, sir. Terrible mess. Madam? Some knockout drops, please. Some knockout drops. You want to pick me up? My good man, if I wanted to pick me up, I would say so. No, quite the reverse. Knockout drops. Surely you must have heard of them. For knocking out what, man? Well, people, of course. Who else? You mean a sleeping draught? Well, I suppose so, but quicker. Instantaneous. Uh, my dear madam, you're asking me for a Mickey Finn. Am I? Now, we have a mild soporific here, if you're, if you're sleeping badly. I'm sleeping perfectly well, thank you. Mickey Finn. Mickey Finn. <clears throat> thank you very much. Desiree, you are the expert on crime. How would one obtain a Mickey Finn? Well, I get all dope on drugs from a little crook called Maury Fish. He hangs around an East End pub called the Limehouse Arms. The Limehouse Arms, thank you very much. Yes? Gin and lime had a pot and lemon, please. Thank you. One six. You know Murray Fish? Why? I want some Mickey Finns. The real McCoy, Mac. What for? Ask no question there. Wait here. Hello? Good evening, boys. Have you got the stuff? What stuff? The Mickey Fins. What do you want them for? Ask no questions, eh? I'm afraid it's our duty, madam. We're police officers. Come along. Dear Lord Maley, this is an unexpected pleasure. Uh, laden with good news, I trust? Yes, and, uh, yeah. ah. Hmm. I, I'm perfectly willing to pay, but the point is this. My wife's father is as rich as Croesus and on his last legs. What's he got to do with it? Well, he can't last for more than a year. She'll get the lot and I should be able to extract. A year? I gave you two weeks, remember? Yes, but ten thousand pounds. You're an insurance chief, aren't you? Yes. You make a lot of money, don't you? Yes, my wife spends a lot of money. If there's any left over, I spend it. Oh, too bad. I don't know where I'm getting it. Ten thousand pounds. Oh, you can do it. I have the greatest faith in you. You. You what? 
You smart. Help! 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 Hold on! Uh. Don't panic! Don't panic! I can't swim! Help! 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 What the devil are you doing here? Day and night, Terminator. I come back to tell you I reported your leaky bottom for you, sir. Are you all right? Uh, yes. Now take him home to bed. He's a valued friend of mine. Valued? Aye, aye, sir. Now straight home to a nice hot drink. We don't want you getting pneumonia. Good night. Good night to you, sir. Come along, my little darling. Do you mind not calling me darling? I'm sorry. I should have thanked you for saving my life. Half a crown. It ain't worth it. I'd have done it for a tanner. <laughs> Your moustache? Oh, yes, sir. I, uh, I got the uh, creeping alopecia, sir. Yes, sir. It crept all over my liberty tree. Yes, sir. Sergeant, fetch Mrs. Ransom. Yes, sir. I'm sure Mrs. Ransom was in search of local colour for one of her charming romances. Mm, local colour is one thing, sir. But asking a respectable publican for a Mickey Finn is another. I don't know, Mr. Finn. Knockout drops, sir. Drugs. Oh, my goodness. Then hurling abuse at a police officer. Good heavens. And giving a false name. Lotus Blossom. Great. True, she had been drinking. Oh, that never. No, never. Mumsy is totally teetotal. She was on port and lemon tonight, miss. Oh, well, I'm sure she's very sorry, very sorry indeed. You she's been under a great strain. I shall write uh, to my MP. You haven't heard the last of this, my good man, not by a long chalk. Flora! Sit down. So-called policemen masquerading as ordinary civilians, and that oaf who arrested me hadn't even shaved. Madam, nobody has arrested you. Now, will you please go home, and if in future you want to know anything about crime, just ask the police. Very well, then. Where would I get a Mickey Finn? I haven't the faintest idea. There you are, you see. Come, Cedric. Well, what are you waiting for? Come along. Ethel, come on! Sergeant, where would one get a Mickey Finn? I haven't the faintest idea, sir. Must you keep jumping out? You seem to have jumped in. What on earth? I, I got caught in a storm. It hasn't been raining. How do you know it hasn't been raining? It was raining where I was. Cats and dogs. And mud, I see. Yeah, I've brushed that off. By the way, one of your girls has been telephoning. Really? Which one? I mean, what do you mean, one of my girls? Well, she had a rather twangy voice and refused to give her name. Never heard of her. You will. She's in trouble. Possible, it must be a mistake. A bomb. Yes, a bomb would do it. You see, a bomb would blow him and his records in the barge to Kingdom Come, and yet it wouldn't hurt anyone else. Yes. But where do we get a bomb from? Well, if you only want a little one, I suppose you'd have to go to Ireland for that. Honestly, bomb indeed. For goodness sake, get the old mad idea out of your head. Ireland. That's it. Ireland! You remember that old villain Doyle we met when we was doing the show for the Dublin old folks? He was still at it. Look here, go out in the morning and get me a sprig of that stuff they wear in the buttonhole. Not a leak, the other full thing. What is it? What? Shillelagh. No, Shamrock, get to it. And book me on the first plane to Dublin in the morning, right? <laughs> <laughs> Henry? Henry? <coughs> Please don't ask me any more questions about that storm. An orphan of the storm has just arrived. Eh? What? Your girl. Look, I keep telling you I haven't got a girl. 
What's she like? Oh, about uh, 40. 40? But she said she was a girl. I wasn't referring to her age. Eh? Hey? Oh. Poor Henry. It never rains, but it pours, hmm? seen her before. It's a lie. What is? Whatever she says I've done. Well, oughtn't you to go and find out? Yes, I jolly well will. And be careful. You might fall. <laughs> really? Did you want me? I'm terribly sorry to come like this, but I thought you'd like to know. I know you've done something dreadful too, but you needn't pay a penny. What the dickens are you talking about? That beastly Dennis! Come in here, will you? And there were copies of a magazine on Sonny McGregor and a lady called Branson. Uh, anyway, now I've got nothing to lose. I'm going to expose everything. Eh, expose what? To whom? To the police, of course. Look, you may have nothing to lose, but other people have. But you don't want to pay him, do you? Of course, I don't want to pay him, but I have my reputation to think of. Look, I can't discuss this with you here. You shouldn't have come. It's most embarrassing. Look, I'll come and see you tomorrow. I can't see you tomorrow. I've got a board meeting and a charity dance. Look, I'll come and see you the day after tomorrow until then expose nothing. Absolutely nothing. Where do you live, by the way? 54 Chillington Court. Do you know it? Yes, I used to have... <laughs> Look, the day after tomorrow. Ah, this way. Very well, young lady. The firm will do everything it can. Yes, the firm will do everything it can to straighten up matters, and we will try and find the young man. Dennis, but I know where and he is. And so do nothing till you hear from me. Twelve thirty, the day after tomorrow. Fifty-four. Fifty-four. Darling, Pardon? shall I jot it down for you? No. Drop the hard stop paddy, please. Oh, right away. Three and six, please. Right, 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 right. There. Go. Tis the shamrock in her hair that reminds me of Kalani, and the little people standing in a row. And. God bless all here. The boys on the stools and the people of Killarney. My name's Lanigan. I'm from across the water. You'll be O'Toole and it's right glad that I am to meet you. I'm descended from the kings, you know, in the halls of Tara. It's like this. We're doing a job in London. It is the Albert Hall at all, and we've run right out of the jelly. So if you could be letting me have a little of the jelly night, be dad, I'd be doing the job. And why are we talking in the cursed tongue when we have the Gaelic? Oh, clan fair whisking gith go garish wind rafwith. Clan to silly go go go. Ah! This is an Englishman, all right. Ah! My nose! My poor darling little nose, it's all gone. F. F A F A. F A R. If I fits, fistula, flat. Ethel, how do you spell Finn? What, a fishy fin? Now a Mickey Finn. Oh, Mumsy, honestly, you and these Mickey Finns, I can see there'll be no peace until I bring you one back from the nursing home. What did you say? Well, dear, the doctors use them all the time on the violent patients. Oh, why didn't you say so before? Why didn't I think of it? Oh, get me some, plenty of them. Mumsy, have you gone bats? I was only joking. Quite. Sit down. Ethel, 
I have something very important to tell you. You know how much my reputation as a writer and as a woman means to me. You're loved and respected the whole world over, Mumsy. Till now, yes. Ethel, many years ago, your father was in China. Money was short. I was young, beautiful, it was easy, and so was I. I fell by the wayside. So you slipped, darling, but so do tons of people. You found your feet again. For some months I lost my head completely. Ethel, suppose someone found out and was threatening to expose me to the world. What would you say? I'd want to kill him, Mumsy. Splendid, for that's exactly what we're going to do. Mumsy! I have it all worked out. I've wrecked his barge already. Wrecked his barge? No, no, reconnoitered. He lives on a barge. But Mumsy, you... Shh. Hello? Are you that Dennis creature? This is Flora Ransom here. I have your money. Come and collect it at 7.30 tomorrow night. Now. You get the pills, I prepare the trunk. Oh! Sold a spawn wire to Olmark Z. And that's that. Wonderful. Whatever's that? Is that, my friend, is the bomb completed? Now for the gunpowder. Get out my Indian Army Colonel with the overdraft clothes. McGregor, my name is Lord Maley. Yes? We haven't actually met before, but you have a reputation for being a very decent sort. <laughs> You're very kind. I do think that you'll agree that we should help each other in times of trouble, don't you? Mm -hmm. How much do you want? No, 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 I want to help you. Mr. McGregor, if I mention the name Dennis, coupled with the fact that I know you're being bead. Bead? Oh, blackmailed. Right. Look, may I come in? <laughs> We sent him a Gregor blackmailed. I think you're mistaken. Mr. Gregor, look, I know you're wondering why I'm here. I know why you're here, friend. You're being bead? Do. No, 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 I, I'm complete outsider. I wouldn't say that. Look, please, let me try to explain. The other evening, a young lady came to see me. You're a very lucky fellow. Good luck to you, sir, and a good day. Mr. Gregor. Go away. You'll regret this. How did he find out? I don't know. Why didn't you let him talk? He obviously only wanted an ally. More friends we have at a moment like this, you know. Make an ally of that stupid idiot? No, thank you. I'll rely on my bomb. And now, for the gunpowder. Want any today? You don't want any what? I don't know who you are. Please go away. But of course you know who I am. I don't. Go away. But you asked me here. Surely you can't have forgotten what happened the other night. You got me out of bed. Well, didn't you? <gasps> Leave him alone, and I'll tell you for why. We're through. Finish. Finito, understand? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Okay, I'm having a day's rough shooting. I want some bullets, please. Cartridges, certainly, sir. Huh? Any particular make? Oh, no, I shouldn't think so, as long as they've got gunpowder in water. <laughs> what ball? <laughs> Oh, boar, no. No, no, I, I, a few rabbits, pheasants, a small fry, you know. <laughs> no, 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 sir. Boar, B-O-R-E. Boar! <laughs> hmm? 
12, 20, or 14? Uh, definitely, yes. Well, which, sir? Well, uh, the largest you have, shall I? Twelve more. Oh, yes. And how many, sir? Fifty? Oh, no, no. I think you would better make it a thousand. A thousand? Yes. But didn't you say a day's rough shooting? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, 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 and it may be uh, pretty rough. Uh, on, on second thoughts, I think you would better make it um, fifteen hundred, perhaps. That's whiskey, gin, sherry, tea, coffee, cocoa, all Mickey Finn. Oh. He's bound to accept one or the other. Mumsy. Oh, Mumsy. Hmm? This is stark staring murder. Now remember, before you pop him in, you must take his keys. Oh. But, but why should I have to do all the dirty work? Because he'd never take a drink from me. He'd suspect foul play at once. I shall be hung. The word is hanged, dear, and you won't be. Mumsy. Oh, Mumsy. I'll go by the service stairs to avoid meeting him. Now, is everything clear? <laughs> Good. I'll be in the car at the front. The moment he falls insensible, oh. signal from the window. But supposing he doesn't fall? Then you will have a lot to answer for. You provided the dope. Mumsy! It won't be long now. Chin up. Chin up. Oh. Chin up. Look. It's Mum. Mum. She... <laughs> This is uh, Miss Ransom. Are you alone? May I come in? Oh, Charlie, Charlie. Going where? No, no. <laughs> yes, Miss Ransom. Hello. Oh, excuse me. Miss. Uh, Mrs. Ransom, if I mentioned the name Dennis, coupled with the word blackmail, would this mean anything to you? Hmm. Yes? Oh, splendid. Good. Well, what I want to know is, are you going to pay him or are you going to fight? I don't know. Yeah. Would you like a drug? A mink? A drink? Yes, I think I would. Please. Thank you. What, what, what would you like? Well, anything, thanks, Walter. Other than tomato juice, of course. <laughs> you know... Miss, uh, Mrs. Ransom, this is a very great relief to me. And, uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. Whoa, whoa, just a minute. You'll have me passing out. Um, could I have a little soda, please? Thank you. Well, you're very good health. Mmm. I needed that. Well, Miss, Mrs. Ransom, we now come to rather a delicate question. Uh, if the threat of publication is genuine, we... True. Hey. That's it. No. Come along now. We can't leave him in there or he'll suffocate before we drown him, and that would never do. Oh. No, it must look like suicide or an accident. Come along now. One, two, three, go. That's the way. Oh. Good evening, Mrs. Ransom. Good evening, Constable Johnson. Give us a hand. Somebody going away? Uh, yes. 
What do you got it here, a body? Uh, yes, how did you guess? My daughter just murdered him. Oh, <laughs> Poisoned or suffocated? Both, I'm afraid. Very funny. Very funny. <laughs> Why did you do it, miss? Well, he was trying to blackmail uh, my... Ethel. Good night, Constable. Good night. After we've popped him in the pond, we must go to the barge, take the cabinet and destroy the contents. Well, couldn't we do that without killing him? Of course not, silly girl. He'd just hide himself away and write it all over again. No, of course we must kill him. Oops, steady. We mustn't hurt him. What's the time, darling? Don't speak ill of the dead. Come on. There it is. Come on. Careful. This is it. Come on, lift it. <laughs> Careful. You have it bursting all over the place. realize that the contents of this cabinet could rock London to its foundations and provide very interesting reading too.
Another storm? Oh, no. Seaweed. That's it, that's it. Yes, I, I had a dip. <laughs> Midnight dip. A fully clothed. Well, I couldn't go in in the nude, could I? Well, could I? I fell in. Well, you can just fall into bed and I'll get the doctor. I can't do that. I've got to go out again. And where to this time? The serpentine? I'll get Maria to lay out your frogman's outfit. Clean up, you look a terrible sight. Oh, good evening. Is Mrs. Ransom in? Yes, but I'm afraid she can't see anyone at the moment. Ah, and I'll wait. Please. Please, couldn't you come back tomorrow? You, you see, Mumsy... Oh, Mumsy won't be in the least surprised to see me, I promise you. Oh. Been rather an evening, may I? Yes, of course. Oh, no, no, oh. it's bad. I've gone off. Flies. Oh, all right, all right. Oh, it's Mumsy. Oh. Uh, good evening. Well, don't look so surprised. You expected me earlier. Or did uh, more pressing engagements banish it from your mind? No, no, no. Oh. Of course I expected you. Won't you have a drink? <laughs> no, thank you. Your daughter warned me. Did she? Mm. Ethel, come here. Excuse me. Certainly. Oh. <sighs> How did he escape? Who? Dennis, girl, Dennis. But that's not Dennis, Mumsy. Of course. It's Dennis. I should know. Well, it can't be. Then who was the man in the trunk? Oh, Mumsy, what have you done? What have I done? You have murdered an innocent bystander, that's what. Oh. Control yourself. You must get this back to the barge at once. But, but why? Because if he misses it now, he'd be suspicious at once. Besides, there's no use in our taking it while he's still alive. If I manage to nobble him now, we can get it back. Though why you had to go and warn him, you silly girl. <laughs> hurry, hurry, our whole future depends on it. <laughs> uh. Forgive me, I was just getting rid of my daughter. Getting rid of people seems to be a hobby of yours. Hey. Are you sure you won't have a drink? <laughs> oh, no. For once, I rather think I won't. Oh. Now, please sit down. Business before pleasure. The keys. Beautiful evening, constable. Beautiful evening. Mr. X was then pushed into the pond. I don't know why you did it. But if that isn't worth double what I asked before, then I'm a Dutchman. It was a dummy. We... I was working out a plot. <laughs> Pinching a plot, don't you mean? What would your chum say? Therefore, I suggest a contract making over 50% of all your future royalties the rest of my life. Impossible. Oh, well then I shall write an anonymous letter telling the police to drag the pond and name you as the culprit. Mumsy, Mumsy. But Mumsy, the keys, you've got the keys. <laughs> In my raincoat pocket, Harry. Oh, don't say there's someone else for the high jump. By the way, what about that money you said you had for me? I couldn't get it. It may be a few days. Well, the new deal will be 5,000 down in advance of the 50%. Tell me, when may I hope to see the cash and contract? Why, you... My agent is away. 
come the day after tomorrow evening at nine o'clock. Well, don't let me down this time. No. Good. something fishy going on here. There'll be something even fishier if you don't get out of here, sir. Oh, no. We're going to stay here and we're going to discuss this thing very quietly. Mystery explosion wrecks Piers' car. Well, Henry, what's going on? Come on, out with it. I'm just about cheesed off with all this. If it isn't the police or reporters, it's you. There's a couple of minor accidents and the girl I've never seen before, never likely to see again. Miss Melissa Wright to see you urgently, sir. So, we are off again. Show her in, Maria. Show her right in. Bathing again, or is this a dry day? Good morning, my dear. How very nice to see you again. My husband was afraid we'd seen the last of you. I have a feeling you won't be needing your frogman's flippers today. <laughs> you shouldn't have come here. I'm terribly Shh. sorry. I came to apologize about yesterday. Is that the only reason you came? No, it isn't. No, I've really lost Bill. I am going to the police. Oh, please. Look, look, that's no good. I mean, you've lost him. There's no point in crying over spilled milk, is there? Oh, you don't understand. Oh, it's not his money I care about. I really love him. So now I'm going to get my own back on that beastly Dennis. Just a minute, just a minute. You did say you saw a fire on that authoress woman, Flora Ransom, didn't you? Yes, I did. Right. Well, first of all, you're coming to see her with me. I have a few questions to ask that murderous woman. Oh. Oh, excuse me. Have a good time. I am not going to have a good time. Is Mrs. Ransom in? Uh, she, she's out, but we are expecting her back soon. Won't you come in? Thank you. My name's Bastable. Yes, I'm the lucky fellow Mrs. Ransom has consented to marry. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, she's, she's a widow, you know. Yes. Uh, this way. Oh, was, uh, was Sir Flora expecting you? I, I hardly think so. Oh. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Maylie, yes. Lord Maylie. Oh. And uh, this is Miss Wright. Oh, oh congratulations. <laughs> no, no, that, that's her name. And, uh, oh, oh, how do you do? <laughs> yes. Uh, <clears throat> oh, do you care for a glass of sherry while you wait? Yes, please. Uh, has Mrs. Ransom been a widow very long? Oh, yes, many years. Yes, many, many years. <clears throat> Her poor husband died out east in rather mysterious circumstances. Oh? Yes. Drowned, poor fellow. Oh. Flora was in England at the time. Yeah. Ah, well, that may be she. She's... Uh, <laughs> she's apt to forget her keys. <laughs> Let me do the talking. Oh, uh, good morning, sir. Mrs. Ransom? I'm afraid she's out, but we are expecting her back, if you can't come in. Well, I am, sir, aren't I? 
Yes. Nothing to worry about, you know, sir. Oh, sure there's not. I've been sent on a little inquiry about a missing cabinet last seen in Mrs. Ransom's possession. I don't know if you know. I have no that. idea, but I'm sure Mrs. <laughs> Ransom. Now, now, please. Well, uh, won't you come in? Oh, yes. Thank you. <coughs> this is Lord... Uh, <laughs> Howdy, girl. Howdy, girl. And this is Miss... Um, <laughs> and, and this is a most genial gentleman from the police. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Won't you join us in a glass of sherry, Sergeant? Well, uh, not supposed to in the line of duty, you know. You'll pardon the uh, word, but a small one for medicinal purposes. <laughs> <laughs> Splendid. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> for what we are about to receive. Oh, Mumsy, need we flee the country? Perhaps if we made a clean breast of it and explained... How you murdered a complete stranger by mistake, that's no excuse. Now go and finish off that trunk. And how you can use that of all trunks. Ah! Now what? Oh, he would come. Now, we must get rid of him. We're going on holiday, remember? Well, let me in. Well, he seems to... Well, he has... A female. A female? Cedric! Why, you brazen hussy! Good heavens, they're asleep. Mumsy! Dope themselves, we may still get away. Mumsy, look! His moustache! Yes, they're on to us, all right. He's one of those plain clothes brutes disguised as an ordinary policeman. Not a moment to lose. If necessary, we must get an earlier plane. You stand guard while I finish packing. Oh, what's this for? To crown him with if he waits. No, no! In for a penny, in for a pound. <gasps> Tomorrow night is my deadline, and if we... Oh, I, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Quite a congregation. <laughs> oh, uh, am I interrupting something? Yes, Cedric. We were working out a plot. Oh, do you know, curious. It's dark already. I, I, I seem to have... Dropped off. Yes, Cedric. Ethel will find you a taxi. Taxi? Oh, thank you very much, taxi. <laughs> Surely, before I dropped off, didn't you have a moustache, Sergeant? Yes, Cedric, that dropped off too. Away with you. <laughs> well, good luck to your endeavours. Thank you. <laughs> you need it. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Now, where were we? On my plan. Now, look, I'm quite prepared to polish him off, but I shall need help with an alibi, and that's where you come in. Now, just a minute. I have a conscientious objection to violence. Well, that's handy after sitting in on hours of discussion, isn't it? I do anything. 
Besides, I've always considered murder to be rather un-English. I mean, one's got to draw the line somewhere, hasn't one? So what's your alternative? The police? All right, if you feel like that, go ahead. I don't mind, you know. I, uh, never did like you, not even on television. Look, you say Dennis is coming round here at nine o'clock tomorrow night? Yes. Right, that means I can get aboard the barge. I'll be at your place, eight o'clock sharp. Get a tape recorder, I'll tell you why. Thank you so much. Henry, I'm delighted to meet you, Mr. McGregor. I'm a fan. Is my husband giving you some uh, comic ideas? Well, some ideas. I can only tell you the things that happened to him in his private life. Well... Yes, dear, well, Mr. McGregor and I have some very important insurance matters to discuss. We mustn't be disturbed in any circumstances. Really? Right, take a few. Now, did you write up some insurance dialogue? There you are. Right. <laughs> Incidentally, uh, one of these days I might really take out a policy with you. I wouldn't ensure your life at Tuppence. Or oh, mine. Ready? Mm -hmm. Now, here are the figures, McGregor. Have a look at them. Do you mean to say that I get all that with such a small premium? Now, here are the figures, McGregor. Have a look at them. Do you mean to say that I get all that with such a small premium? The detestable little man again. He saved your miserable life. Half a crown. <laughs> Do you mean to say I get all that with such a small premium? Fine. Well, we'd better record 15 minutes worth of that to keep you going. Look, tell me, how long do you think he'll be? That rather depends on when he uh, goes to sleep. But I hope to finish the job by midnight. which interests me. Now, here are the figures, McGregor. Have a look at them. Do you mean to say that I get all that with such a small premium? Love, mother would go on so. We can always say we spent our holiday cruising. Yes, cabin class. Come on, sweetie, we'll be late. No, you don't want that. Come on now. Oh, Come on, right. Right. What are you doing here? Morning, sir. Uh, well, I were looking for you, sir, about your top and bottom, sir. There's no need. I've let the barge to a young married couple. So I gather, sir. Yes. What? Yes. 
Uh, oh, sir, just in case, where are you removed to? To the country. As you are here, you can help me carry the rest of my luggage to the car. Be delighted. I say. Mr. Dennis? Yes? I'm a police officer. Who are you? Uh, well, sir, I'm from the West London Borough Bureau of Barges, Briggs, Sparks, Boats. Buzz off. Buzz off, yes. Mr. Dennis, I've got a warrant here for your arrest, sir. On a charge of demanding money with menace and one Wilfred Aintree. And I'll warn you now, sir, that anything you say will be taken down and may be used in evidence. All right, I won't say anything now. But if I'm to go down, I shall blow them all sky high. I'll race it to scandal it. Oh, I see. Well, all right, let's go. In here first, please. Huh? We won't find anything very interesting in here. personal risk clause which interests me. Uh, supposing some frightful disaster happens to me. Now here are the figures, McGregor. Have a look at them. Do you mean to say that I get all that with such a small premium? Good morning, uh, Lady Bailey. Good morning. Good morning, yes. Um, I, um... Yes? Well, I, uh, I'm, I'm very sorry to trouble you at this hour, but, um, is your husband there? I just... Not all there, oh. I'm thinking. <laughs> Henry? What do you want? Do you and Mr. McGregor want breakfast? J just a minute, I'll ask him. No, I'll ask him. He's out here with me. You know, I have come back to clear up one small point. Do you mean to say I really get all that with such a small premium? Excuse me. Dr. Wilson. Dr. Wilson. Dr. Wilson, Dr. Wilson. Nigel. I can't believe it. And Virginia. I can't believe that. Mario. <laughs> I can believe that. <laughs> I say, you were a bit of a lion, weren't you? Oh, lies. <laughs> Please, you got the fire, McGregor. What's the use of that? He won't forget our names. Sky high, he said. I'll blow you all sky high. And he will, the cad. So we're sunk. If he talks, so we might just as well be hanged for a sheep with a lamb. Look here. Hmm? Dennis must not be brought to trial. So what are you going to do? Break into jail and kill him? No, break into jail and get him out. What? Yes, he must be saved at all costs. Rescued and taken out of the country. Are you crazy? We've just been killing ourselves trying to murder him. Yes, and you failed dismally. Now I'm taking charge. Now, get on that telephone to that ransom woman. Hmm? Come on. You are mad. We'd never get away with it. We wouldn't. But don't you realize we've got hundreds of potential allies here from every start of society? Scores of them, hundreds of them. Look for yourself. Pilots, ship owners, doctors, politicians. Everybody we could need. You need? For what? For the most fantastic escape in history. Well, come on, get on that telephone. Yes, Flux. Yes, it would work. We'd have the police running around in circles. Hundreds of loyal allies welded together in a common cause. Good heavens! Sir Hatton Haysbrook, he's on the board of my directors. He'll have to go, he can't employ disgusting people like that. Well, come on, get on the phone! Yes, yes. Two, one. Brickwell, to fetch the prisoner. Just home. They are using the woolsey. Right, Two minutes car. to go. Help! Police! Uh, I'm being attacked. Four men. The third floor. Four 
14th Stratton Street, West Central 2. 14th Stratton Street, WC2. Hello, 70G. Hello, 70G for George. Woman attacked, 14 Stratton Street. Hello, 70G for George. Message received. Over. Help! Police! Audience cinema! Police! Quick! Gang fight! Help! He's going to murder me! Come quickly! 10 Luton Square, Southwest 7. Hello, 7A for Hello. Apple. One Clovis Street, espresso bar. Yeah. Gang fight. Help! Darling, I'll explain later. Oh, Bill, I'm so pleased to see you. You're back. Hello, 15B, 15B. Hello, 15B for Betty. Brendan Crescent, maniac at large. Innis trial starts today. Okay. What's this, a jamboree? I say, old boy, your tires punch up. Lovely day for a trial. Lovely day for almost anything, Mr. Dennis. <laughs> what, you? Look, for your own good. Oh. Oh. oh, you've had a puncture. Well, mend it. No, you can't have a relief car. We're far too busy. Everything all right, Doctor? Everything is all right, and thank you very much. You've got a long way to go yet. Bravo! Well done, indeed. Open the door, Doctor. I really do believe we've done it. The last lap worries me. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, this is your own good. Uh. Oh, well, whatever that was, it's over. Prisoner kidnapped on way to Old Bailey. I bet you quit to a copper, that's another hoax. I've always wanted to go in a helicopter, Wing Commander. Most exciting. The last lap is likely to be even more exciting. Probably the death of all of us. That's for your own good, old man. Well, last lap but one. Oh, don't mention that last lap. I don't know what you're worried about. I spoke to Admiral Kenley and he told me he's had one engine failure and one small leak in the past 15 years. Even so, 200 miles out in the Atlantic in a frail craft like that. We ought to have got an aeroplane. So how are you going to transfer someone to a ship from an aeroplane, eh? Sorry, old man, let's be your own good. He's popped off again. How are we doing? 30 minutes behind schedule. You'll be aboard the Skylark in two hours. Uh. Cheer up, Skipper. It won't be long now. Uh, oh, you might hate this beastly thing. You know, I've said a lot of rude things about you in the past, Henry. But I've got to hand it to you, boy. This has been a magnificent piece of organization. There's no doubt about it. Thank you, Sonny. 
But I really do like you on television. He's coming round. It's all right, we're not going to hurt you. Well, where am I? About 200 miles out in the Atlantic. What? In a few minutes, we get a transfer you to a ship which will take you to South America and safety. Why? Hmm? Why? Because of your threat to expose everyone at your trial, we decided to rescue you on conditions. What conditions? That you never set foot in England again, and you never attempt to blackmail any of your victims. 300. 300 people worked on your escape. And if there's one more peep out of you, you'll get done. 300 times. And you did all this to stop me talking at the trial? We had to. Save England from the worst scandal since Lady Godiva took up horse riding. Hmm? <laughs> but I wasn't going to talk. I think I had a very good chance of getting off. Yes, and if my counsel were right, you destroyed most of the evidence against me when you took that cabinet. So, uh, you're in it up to the neck, eh? Uh, if you don't mind, I feel a bit faint. I think I'll get some fresh air. What on earth did he do that for? He's probably a very good swimmer. <laughs> anyway, what are we worrying about? Whoopee!